Travel is about adventure and the unknown. We learn the most when we are completely dependent on a new culture and the people around us. So vulnerability is the greatest adventure. But what happens when life stands in the way? What happens when you actually have to be vulnerable with the elements, locals, each other, and yourself? Have you ever dreamed of traveling to exotic locations? Yeah, I feel like it's raining inside me. Dining at four-star restaurants. Top, top, chef. Posh hotels. And this is so sick. Throw it in the back, let's go. <laughs> Luxurious spas. We probably smell so bad. Meeting the locals. <laughs> We've spent our professional lives making films for other people. And at one point, we realized that what was happening behind the camera was oftentimes more interesting than what was in front. 4 a.m. rain. Focus on me, not the camera. I can touch the camera. You just said he couldn't talk to the camera because you're not on camera. It's only Steve that I don't like. He, Steve I, doesn't do well when he talks to camera. He does well when he talks to others. So we created the greatest excuse of all time. We're going to make our own travel show. All the cameras point to whoever says their name. Ready? Vern. <laughs> <laughs> so with only the help of a few locals, We'll spend 10 days in a foreign country. This is a, what a real life breakdown looks like. We don't know what we'll be eating. That's the food. Where we'll be sleeping. So we don't know where we're going. We're just driving this way. Or who we'll be meeting. Or where we'll be showering. Or if this is even going to work. The cameras weren't switched on, <laughs> so we had to fake the introductions. As filmmakers, we've always gone out of our way for a good story. We're building a home! So we're going to travel the world with only a sleeping bag and a camera, in hopes that our vulnerability will make us better. And it starts with being underprepared and overwilling. Is the great excuse? Yeah, no, it's actually just a great excuse. Like, I think this is just actually Vern figured out a way to take four of his, three of his friends on vacation. Martine has a kid. Steve Ryan should be planning his wedding right now. Vern Moen has three children. Uh, should definitely not be going on this trip. Uh, I quit my job. I had twins this year. Uh, we have way too much responsibility to go on this, to go on this adventure. Uh, so conflict number one, none of us should be going on this trip. <laughs> Marcin, who yeah. are you? What's going on in your life right now? <coughs> We've never made a travel show. We've never actually been on camera. We might suck. So what is the easiest way for all this to fail? The easiest way for all this to fail is that we're not interesting. That's, I think. Are you ready? Yeah, I mean, I'm ready. Leave. I'm nervous about leaving you and the kids and uh, uh, here you, to you nervous? do all the things. Or you feel guilty? Guilty, that's the word, uh. yeah. So I created this show because I'd been working for a lot of different people for a very long time. Like I've tried to invest myself in films and projects. They have almost exclusively been a failure. Just make sure we have cameras. You know, what's at stake, I guess, is at a certain point you break. So now for me to step out and say, well, this is something that I want to do. This is what I care about. This, I mean, even being in front of the camera is like, now I can't hide behind anything. For our pilot episode, we're going to Scotland. With a country motto of, no one provokes me with impunity, you'd think Scotland would be full of lifted trucks and neck tattoos. Wikipedia says it's comprised of at least 790 islands. The Loch Ness Monster, castles, haggis, whiskey, dark sea locks, cows with bangs, a true feast for the camera. This is Northern Scotland. A place we've been intrigued by for a long time, but never had an excuse to go to, until we decided to make a travel show. We've flown into infants, and we'll be traveling through the islands and the islands of Northwest Scotland. But first, we need to learn how to drive on the wrong side of the road. Oh, there's reverse! Since we haven't booked any hotels or accommodations, we're hoping to get out there and meet people that will put us up. Go, 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 it's like it's California. But if it comes down to it, Scotland has a rule known as right to roam. 
which allows us to camp pretty much anywhere as long as it's not directly in front of someone's house. Oh, it's beautiful camping weather. But while the rain had abated, another type of cloud was about to roll in, midges. <laughs> midges are these super tiny little blood-sucking flies that swarm in the highlands during summer. So right now, like a wall of them, you just inhale them. Yeah, like you breathe in and you're you're eating midges. I'd rather be bit by mosquitoes, I think. Just point not. your camera in this direction real quick. Mm -hmm. This is it's beautiful. Ryan, you don't have very long before the. The midges come. They're they're coming. You can you can take it off my back. Oh, I just yeah. Like oh, Frank. That's I perfect. needed to launch the drone, and we were surrounded by a drone sea of tall grass. So naturally, we implemented our human I launch pad. Yeah, I think you should wear it for protection. Keep those ears down. Hey, don't stand up, Sid. Usually, when I go out on a shoot, there's a whole production team that organizes every moment of our trip. For us. Other than a few key things, this trip is essentially unplanned. Can you guys explain to us one more time the other thing that's gonna kick my ass tonight? What do you flying mean? Flying Oh, kids, kids, yeah, flying ticks. We've yeah, invited two nasty. local chefs to join us on our adventure, Rue and Andy. They're old friends of mine and they've volunteered to be our Scottish chaperones for the trip. Get brain damage. What a way to put a down on I know, trip, so really just uh, enjoy yourselves, guys. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> safety briefing. should really work for the Scottish Tourist Board right here. Really selling it. For our first night, Andy has taken us to a valley he thinks will be a beautiful place to camp for the night and get acclimated. Martin, get a fire started. Why is it? Martin is our Rackus trail guide and human toolbox. He knows how to fix anything because he's probably already broken it before. He's indestructible. He's broken his neck, diving into a shallow pool. He's rolled every car he's ever owned, flown off dirt bikes, and somehow he survives. He works as an off-road adventure guide and has a tendency to, well, not research anywhere we're going. So you just answer the question of what do you know about Scotland, which is absolutely nothing. I don't nothing. know much. I, I do you know where it is on a map? After our first night of camping in Glen Strathbahar, we're heading on a three hour drive southwest to Loch Sunart to visit a scout diver that Andy knows. Yeah, beach drive. Oh, no, 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 that's way too big. God, come on. I grew up in the 909. The waters here are really cold, but a hub for scalps. Andy has called in a scalp supplier, James McFilthy who's going to take us on a dive. Hey, Andy, how are you? How are you doing? Very good. Good to see you. It can get rough really quick. And so this is a Scottish summer. This is a Scottish summer. Which island are we heading to? Kana. On the island of Kana. This is here. Uh, how many people live on this island? No one lives here full time. OK. Do, do, the Druids like it. They, they, they think they, well, they don't think. There are really good ley lines through here. What ley, ley lines, it's like lines of energy. You know, they're, and they're connected to so Stonehenge. Uh -huh. And they come here and they take little things, just like twigs or bits of seaweed or something, and it's got energy in it. I, I think what we're talking about here is the original vibes. Either way, unless we find a druid with a spare bedroom, looks like another night of sleeping on the ground. I think we'll be fine. What could go wrong? Well, we were supposed to go diving for scallops, but the weather turned and the diver generously offered to give us a stash of about 100 scallops and drop us off on this deserted island. Oh, Steve. A very fine compromise and hopefully a chance to forage and make an epic fireside meal, courtesy of all that is Scotland. And soak up some of those druid vibes. Well, everyone's been giving me a lot of sh** because I bought a tent and then didn't build it before this trip. I mean, it's a brand new tent. It should have everything it needs. Ryan Ford will fail. He's reading instructions right now. That's what tears your tent up right That's there. Right. Come on. Ooh, check. Where's the front? Ryan is the quickest to laugh out of all of us, and he's incredibly optimistic. He got married, had a kid, and then twins by the time he was 25. And he hasn't been on a vacation since. He's been working in various ad agencies all around North America for the last three years, and he's really just looking for this to be an excuse to go on vacation. While Scotland has a reputation for fried foods, our chefs are introducing us to the country's true culinary potential. 
These are the best men to show us how to prepare these fresh scallops. And then you just push down like that. You can see them moving. Yeah, I can feel it moving. Sorry, buddy. Oh, that's a big boy, this. Other than this tarp that we brought, this is the underprepared part of our show. How much is it raining, Steve? <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's raining inside me. So let's speed build a fire Can this you, uh, time with wet wood instead like of dry wood. Okay. 402, take 11, Mark. Can I get some water? So we brought up some seawater, put the potatoes in the seawater and then reduce reduce it right down until it's nothing and then the potatoes have a lovely coating of salt on them once they're done. In theory, we may end up eating raw potatoes. Rue and Andy are shopping local. They're foraging around the island to see what we can pair with our fresh scallops. Uh, so I've picked a bit of seaweed down at the bay there. In the UK, anyway, you can eat every single seaweed, as long as it's growing on the rocks. I've also picked something else, which I need to work out what it is. It tastes awesome. I'm calling it like a sea chive. Probably super poisonous. <laughs> oh yeah. A break in the rain came just in time for dinner. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna heat the pan up, then we're gonna get some olive oil in there, throw in some chopped garlic and the scallops. Really high heat. And we're gonna sear them on, on each side. And then I'm gonna squeeze a bit of lemon and then a handful of coriander on top. Actually quite a lot of garlic. Almost everything we were cooking either came from the ground beneath us or from the ocean beside us. We we're basically eating Scotland. Can you just, no. can you teach me? Wait, hold on, coriander is not hot like not the real chicken of the sea. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Roast <laughs> boots? <laughs> you your boot. We lit my boots right. on fire. But we had some new laces and they're finally dry. <laughs> I don't think I'll get my foot back in there. But if you do, it'll be so warm. Okay. I have my Converse. So, my three pairs of shoes? Three <laughs> pairs of shoes. When I was packing, I was like, I'm gonna pack light. Vern said to pack really light, so I'm gonna bring one pair of shoes. No, 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 three pairs of shoes for Martin. So much so you can even burn a pair. The moment I've been waiting for the entire night. Just as I predicted, Ryan's tent is broken, and we now get to sleep in hammock bunk beds. <laughs> that was a little sketchy. Hey, but at least the rain stopped. Not exactly the type of earth energy we were hoping to soak up. Yeah. Those plastic bags will last you for seven more days. Uh, well, yeah. James is on his way back to pick us up, and it was time to get our boots on and pack up. Jeez. That was very intense. Is our camera still working? Uh, barely. Oh, goody. We've been in the middle of nowhere on a remote island, only accessible by boat, and so we're looking forward to actually meeting some locals. But not before going two hours out of our way for Martine to buy some new, extremely fancy hiking boots. They're a little high-tech for my, my flavor, but at this point, I'm ready for high-tech. So you get, and that was quite smart. But we got some okay, camping me. advice from the shop owner, and we're making our way toward Malik, a small port town on the coast, and the gateway to the Isle of Skye. So we have raced all the way to Malik to get our ferry to Skye. We have six minutes before we have to leave, and we're trying to get some fish and chips. Fish and chips was so popular during both world wars that and many historians say it helped win the war. For us, we just have wet socks and we're really hungry. <laughs> so we've just confirmed that uh, we are about to consume the greatest fish and chips. Yeah. Ever. What you doing? We're just traveling Where across the country trying to meet everyone. Where are you from in America, Canada? From uh, Southern California. Oh. What do you think of Donald Trump? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. oh. He needs more salt, actually. It's all the craze, but it Thank tastes you. nuts. It doesn't. Dinara. What is the flavor? Iron. Cream it's like soda. A, no it's more. like a creamsicle. Okay, we're getting warmer. Iron oh. brew, often called Scotland's other drink, is a tooth-crackingly sweet carbonated beverage of nuclear orange color. It reigns supreme here in Scotland, selling 20 cans every second. The recipe, which has been a long guarded secret, was thankfully cracked late the previous night by our own Martine, who will now read all the ingredients to you. Iron brew, carbonated water, sugar, acidic acid, flavorings, 
flavorings including caffeine, ammonium ferric citrate, quinine, refrigerated, E211, colors, sunset yellow, <laughs> may have adverse effect on activity and attention in children. <laughs> Well, there you go. Good job, Martin. We're even further north. north. Mm -hmm. Ah, the famed Isle of Skye, the west coast of Skye. Famous for its rugged terrain, ancient Scottish heritage, and a distillery that I have personally been wanting to visit for about 10 years. Uh, so we uh, just got to Talisker. We are looking for a place to sleep. Oh, did we get firewood? No, no. We don't have any firewood. Ah, uh, shit. What, what we could just do is go to the pub until it closes and then by that point hopefully we'll be so drunk that we'll just sleep under the stars again. Yeah. The spot's perfect. Except for that no camping sign. Yeah, yeah well. But that's the sort of best places to go camping because nobody ever expects you to camp there. This is me in the morning. Oh. The only problem with here is that the people we're meeting tomorrow are the people who are going to be pissed off with whoever camped out here tonight. But they're going to see oh, Yeah, the but truck. then they'll be like, the thing is they Oh, but it's part of your film, that's yeah, funny. Yeah. I, I don't want to do it and then have to spend four hours with people who are pissed off this tomorrow. Yeah. Steve Ryan is impossible to dislike. He'll talk to anyone and have them laughing in seconds. He's an award-winning food photographer, he started a brewery, he runs a magazine. He's cautious, and I think terrified to go on a trip like this. Steve... What are you the most nervous about? I'm nervous about being interesting on camera, I'm nervous about being the weakest link. Well, I hate cold water. He wants everything to be planned and organized. He needs to know what's coming around the bend. Oh, this light keeps bouncing in this. This is another thing I need to be worried about. The same oh, no. thing. What is gonna happen, Steve? However, Steve did have a good point. We had to do something about it. Yeah, that's Maybe we go it. drive up now and say, listen, we're the guys who are doing the filming. We need to be here really early. Wow, we, we, yeah, what, let's what go want, produce this. What we want to do yeah. is let's we go produce this and make it happen. We wanted to uh, put our tents on the, the bit that says no camping. Okay. Cheers, thanks. Yeah, yeah we can do it. it. My, my friends. Up? Yeah. Come on, let's stop faffing around. Faffing? Faffing. Faffing? Do you not, do you not faff? No. But if it's we do one in the faff camera everywhere. Dark, it's like a bit more fun. <laughs> this is like Kaylee dancing for cameramen. <laughs> wait, wait. You got me? Yeah. So, we are about to drink Buckfast. Ah, Buckfast. Originally sold as medicine and with more caffeine than eight cans of cola, Buckfast is a fortified tonic wine made by monks in the south of England. But it's Scotland that keeps these monks employed, annually spending over 40 million pounds on a notorious beverage. It's like a raisin that you find on the bottom of your shoe that's <laughs> soaking in water. <laughs> Um, I drank an entire bottle of Buckfast, and I'll be your host for the evening. I am Vern Moen, and we're at Talisker. Not only the distillery, but also the town. And I think we're going to a Kaylee, which is a, I don't know what it is. So I really don't know what we're walking into, but you can already hear the music, and it's beautiful, and I can't wait to go inside. Vern, my brother-in-law, is very comfortable being uncomfortable. He's the most accomplished filmmaker of us all, and it's taken him around the world. He always chooses the most difficult path. He's lived in a Winnebago. He sailed across the ocean on a boat made of plastic bottles. The unknown is where he thrives. But the real challenge for him is going to be stepping out from behind the camera to just be vulnerable. I'll just come sit with you to tell you how annoying you've been tonight. Excellent! I'm actually on the verge of kicking you out. Sometimes we're doing really good things, and then sometimes I want to rein these guys in yep. because I want to not be the quintessential American just consuming their culture. I want to contribute to it and, you know, feel a part of it. I'm not a so I was being I hope real. that's we can move. Go, go, go. Okay, go, 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 go. See the tall shit there? Who has the keys? Who has the keys? You probably. <laughs> oh my god. Well, 
That was a sh show. Rather than relating to people, we pissed off an entire village. And now we have hangovers to prove. This is so sucky. I don't, I don't know why we drink that fast. All right, I'm hungover. Uh, I slept in the rain all night. Uh, all of my things are soaked. What were we drinking? Bugfast. Bugfast. Weeks ago, we'd scheduled a tour of the Talisker Distillery at 8 a.m. with Donald Colville, the global malts ambassador for Diageo, who flew in just to give us a very special tour. This, we now find ourselves in the still house. So, but everything we do today is almost identical in theory to what they did to 400 years ago. Talisker is known to many, including me, as being an almost perfect scotch whiskey. A mix of smoky peat, salinity, and a sweet finish. Which, if you could smell us right now, you'd say the same thing about us. This is a special day. Very special day. Special about every distillery has its got, it's almost like its own hidden magic. Prime example for Talisker is, on the wash stills you've got this U-bend, which, being honest, makes absolutely no sense. We can't really explain why it works, but we're not going to change it. it kind of sounds like the concept of our show. <laughs> oh, 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 hot springs. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so these are the worm tubs. So these are integral to giving Talisker that bigger, richer, more viscous style. If what would happen got... if a human got in there? Yeah, could we make like a like Talisker so... bottle where we just sit in here for the whole day? <laughs> so you're basically making a soup of yourself. Yes, exactly. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm not sure that sounds that appetizing, oh, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what happened last night, but supposedly we're supposed to be at the dock at 11.30. We're four minutes late, so hopefully the captain's not angry. We are going on that boat. Ship. Ship. <laughs> Apparently, we had met the crew of this tall ship last night at the bar. They'd invite us on board Hi. for a tour, Hi, I thought, but uh, Vern had other plans. <laughs> are, we are we swimming back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I gotta to overcome my fear at some no. I grew up as a competitive swimmer, so I loved the water. You just call it a shower, Steve. But you see, Steve here has an acute fear of cold water. It's been emotional. So this is a big moment for him. Which way's left? <laughs> Great boat you got there. All right. Yep. Thanks for the showers. Guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. One, two, two. Okay. three. <laughs> Be born again. The shock of the icy water was something of a reset. I felt like it helped me to come to my senses. As I said, I didn't exactly remember everything that happened the previous night, but I knew I could have done better. I knew we all could have done better. Oh, this is gonna be strong entrance, Steve. <laughs> Very strong. Oh. You're still rolling, you usually cut when I enter the scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> I'm beached. That's oh, the first shower I've taken in three days. Oh, wow. I can't feel my arms anymore. Also, I usually for a swim like this, I'd shave down. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> hey, you've conquered your fear, right? And what a way to do it. Seems like everything we need here is within sight and around us. We just need to slow down to see it. Harvest is a really small village, and just a short walk from the distillery is an oyster ship that has oysters harvested from the very water we just swam. Steve, talk to me about what's happening right now. I'm overstyling this picture. Now we're taking photographs. As you know, Steve, one of my favorite ways of enjoying a uh, Talisker is with oysters, but the best way to enjoy it is to enjoy them both together in the shell. So quite a lot of people will take a wee sip and enjoy it and try and be all nice and delicate with it. You know that's not my style. No, it's not. I'm gonna drain all that off. Yeah. Then we take a little bit of Talisker. Slange. So we just filled with these. Bottoms up. Slange. Slange. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, just finally an opportunity to enjoy Scotland in a Scottish way and not just running around like a bunch of dip When you take the whiskey, be careful with it in your nose. Don't just huge big sniff because it's a natural anesthesia and you want to kind of protect your nose. So very small, gentle 
try and not be too grown up about this because adults are quite boring. Adults tend to think too much and analyse too much, whereas what we want to do is really delve into your imagination and just think, what does it remind me of? Because there's so many different aromas there Medicine that remind damage. you of something. Got a bit of a new car smell. Oh, new car, it yeah. does! It's like a new leather smell, yeah. yeah. leather. Mm. Obviously, you buy better cars than I do. Avon bottle. just for craft services. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, for a shoot like this, there'd be a celebrity hosting the show. Because that's how you sell a travel show. You attach a celebrity. Well, sorry, this is what you get. This is all we could afford. Hey, give me that line again. What do we want to do tonight? Okay. So, now that we've done Talisker, we're kind of free until tomorrow night when we're, um, we got our ferry. So, we have 24 hours to kind of do whatever we want. So, what does people want, what do people want to do tonight? Steve, you just said that. Uh, Steve, your line is... What would you like What to would you guys like to do tonight in action? So what do you guys want to do tonight? Cut. Steve, I feel like you don't want to be on this adventure. Uh, so Steve, <laughs> let's go from the top. Yeah. Uh, I just want you to give it... Really, really let us know that you, 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 you want to figure out what we're doing tonight. You're a okay? curious person, right? Yeah. yeah. You're so, roll camera. Man. Camera speeds. Uh, Steve, don't f it up. And action. <laughs> so, um, cut. No <laughs> laughing, Steve. So, what do you want to do tonight? We got it! Yeah! <laughs> it has been said that the Isle of Sky is conclusive proof that sometimes God was just showing up. Much of the island is solid rock, causing most of the rainfall to quickly flow off the island. But there is at least one place it pools up, the ferry pool. Make a really bad decision. So this is Isle of Harris. This is the Isle of Lewis. Stornoway is the main town, which I think we're leaving from, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll come back to the mainland now. Uh, one policeman on this island, so uh, we're about to get weird. <laughs> the Outer Hebrides are the most remote islands off the northwest of Scotland. The geography here is stunning. The marshy bogs of peat dramatic coastlines. And pristine beaches look like it could be in the Caribbean. We've landed here on a Sunday, meaning the entire island is closed, which means no food. So Steve's gonna use some local foraging skills he learned from the chefs. Really what I got here, which is a really good find, it's sea lettuce, and you'll see here, this is really nice. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm chopping it off, and I'm gonna stack it, and I'm gonna put it on a, dry it out in a rock. So when we come back, it'll be all shrivel up and dry. It'll be a real like, salty little snack. Oh, salty snacks! Salty yeah! Snacks. Quite tasty. A little dirty, but quite tasty. Oh. Have a little taste of this. I might have forgotten to wash the... A lot Looks of like the, uh, party time confetti. <laughs> but oh, that's nice. We should wash it, probably. <laughs> oh! Mmm. Sea lettuce. Uh oh, single match! The one thing about Scotland is these logs are like a third of the size of what's at home, and it's... Kind yeah, of, it's I'm American sorry our logs. portions aren't as big as the American portions. Oh, so uh, many of the islanders are employed by the production of a very unique fabric that is only made here, Harris Tweed. And we're hoping to learn how it's made and how people live here. We are at a, the home of a weaver who uh, works with the mill. This is Martine, my new friend. You guys should get a tweed jacket made out of And I'm gonna open a, just one wearing. tweed jacket Next that goes over both of us. Well, you're already wearing a pattern. I'm, I'm Vern. Oh, yeah. At least you've heard of Hardest Tweed in America anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some local bikers we'd met explained to us that many of the colors in the fabric are inspired by the colors of the hills here in the Hebrides. So we figured we should stop by the actual factory and get a tour from Margaret, their sales director. 
So at this stage of the process, we're actually blending our wool together. So we're going to take our base colours and we're going to blend anything from two to eight different colours together to create our yarn colours. So the blended wool is now ready to start the carding process. And what they're going to do is brush out every individual wool fibre so that we have our fibres all in a straight line. So that twist is what gives it strength. Yeah. So before this mill was here 10 years ago, what were these people doing? Various jobs. The younger ones wouldn't have had employment in the industry at all. So weaving really helps to build those village communities as well. Yeah. So this is the loom that all of those home weavers are using. So uh, if I wanted to become a weaver and, and move here... Be my guest. You can come <laughs> round here right now and try this if you wish. I'll try it. Faster? That's good. Keep it going across. Steady Eddie. We'll leave you here for a while. Okay. This is Ian, who's with us from the Harris oh, Tweed Authority. Oh, Martin. So oh, Ian is one of only three um, Harris Tweed inspectors that will come to the mill and they will inspect every single meter of Harris Tweed that's manufactured. Harris Tweed only becomes Harris Tweed at this inspection table. It's effectively owned by the community of the Outer Hebrides and they are the guardians of the orb. So each, if you wanted to become a Harris Tweed weaver, you need right. to live on the Outer Hebrides. So we could rent the home and then we would need to buy a loom? You would need to buy a loom, yes. And how much is a loom? Best part of £20,000 plus. Whoa, okay. Can you do like a payment plan or? No. Layaway. No. Mm. Just so cash. It's just cash. So we're probably not going to become weavers, <laughs> but maybe we could become capable TV show hosts. I think the first step is doing less talking and more listening. Wow, bed's right here. I have my lounge area here. Here, in the central park of Stornoway, you're probably wondering what is going on. I don't know how I feel about this. Well, you're not the only one. You can't really get in trouble. There's only one cop on this island. What you can't see here is how bad we smell. So, I heated some water, loaded this thing up. Oh, gosh. All right. Oh, fresh scent of coconut. <laughs> some people stand in the dark. Just looking at two naked monkeys. Wow, my skin doesn't know what's happening. I'm just like, why don't you guys get haircuts? We probably smell so bad. Oh yeah. I smell great now. Oh. You are just like... <laughs> we look insane. While waiting for our ferry back to the mainland, we decided to make a campfire in the city park and freshen up. For all of our wanting to meet the locals, they're now starting to find and us. There's cop. There's cop. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. How are you? Okay. How are you? The one police officer on the island has found us. Talk to me. Um, are you guys going to be here as long as you've got the fire going? Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, we're here. Fine. And, and then we'll we'll pour water on him. Probably good. That's cool. That's cool. You guys are. Everyone here is very oh, yeah. pleasant. <laughs> okay. American cops. American oh. cop would have had me in a headlock. <laughs> yeah, listen, my shift's not finished yet. There's plenty of time. <laughs> Back on the mainland, we had one more stop to make, just outside of Inverness, that Steve had secretly coordinated through his brewery friends. Black Isle Brewery is the first and only organic brewery in Scotland. And beyond that, the owners, brothers David and Michael Gladwell, have managed to build in a fully sustainable, biodynamic farm around it. The uh, mic, I forgot there's a mic attached to all my chest hair. <laughs> it just lets you know it's there, doesn't it? I mean, it's just sort of floating. Just sitting on the carpet. <laughs> Mark? So we're Scotland's only organic brewery. We're a 50 hectolitre brewery. There are a lot of people um, that buy our beer that aren't even aware that it's organic, um, which is a great thing because you know, it means that we're, we're making a product that stands up there um, with all the other producers. Yeah, sure, I'm drinking beer, but at the same time, I'm also making a kind of commitment as well. We've seen it here since we converted this farm to organic. It's such a more lively, healthy, vibrant environment around here. A lot of our barley around here, the non-organic, barley is ripened with something called glyphosate. Our farming neighbours would call it liquid sunshine. The commercial name is called Roundup. It's a weed killer. So that in two weeks time after them spraying it, they know everything's dead. It then gets harvested, goes through the system. The Soil Association last year did a survey in London. They tested a thousand people and 700 of those thousand people had traces of glyphosate in their urine. Much prefer not to be ingesting weed killer if I don't have to. That's what we feel strongly about, and that's why we have an organic brewery. Slan Javar. Is this how you serve beers in Scotland? Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what you guys are going to have, but you know. 
a nice, nice looking liver. It looks nice and wow. there's no, yeah. no blemishes yeah. on it or anything like that. Gee, I could maybe it's do a market. trade. Do so, do a trade. <laughs> <laughs> For our last night in Scotland, Michael and David have not only offered us their barn to sleep in tonight, but have graciously butchered one of their Hebridean lambs. And Rue and Andy were spit roasted for three hours over an open fire. What we're gonna do, we're gonna cook some whole veg on the fire and then we'll peel the burnt parts off yeah, the outside time, yeah. of the veg. And then I'm gonna make an almond and anchovy salsa verde to go with the lamb. So almonds and anchovies go really nicely with the lamb, yeah. as does salsa verde. Using only ingredients found on this very farm, our chefs give a modern twist to a traditional Scottish way of cooking. Oh, it's a bit more long. Yeah. So it should be a little spaghetti like no, that. No, no. Oh, and then it's like liver, right? Well, it's long. Long, but it tastes. <laughs> Try it. It tasted like uh, meat chalk. Right? That's accurate. Traveling is a space for me to test everything I know and believe in in a new environment. It's like learning a new language. You can read all the books about that language, but until you go and actually have a conversation with someone, you have no idea if you speak that language. Martin, I said, wide shots, Closer. wide shots. Every single person I meet has a story, and I'm lucky if I get a little piece of that. It's easy to sit around a pub and just bull with my friends that I've flown across the world with. What's hard is to ignore that and go talk to someone that I otherwise would never talk to. I haven't eaten since uh, eggs. At when was eggs? Eggs o'clock. Seven o'clock this morning? What time are you You're in for a treat, bro. This is invented in Scotland. Coleslaw. Slaw. Invented this. in Scotland. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Well done. It's a Spanish winter. Hot kitchen, we're moving quick. <laughs> All right, guys, what the hell's going on? We're thinking about writing a cookbook called oh, yeah. Cooking Outdoors Cooking with no equipment and no one really to help you and Ooh. just a load of Oh, guys. it's kind of like our film show. Yeah. In the comfort of my little bubble at home, I do all this stuff. Posturing, talking, learning. But until I go out into the world, and I'm threatened by it, by new experiences and things I don't understand, things that make me feel vulnerable, that's the most exciting space for me. You have an entire, well, three quarters of a goatee. <laughs> there were a lot of reasons not to go on this trip, but sometimes we just need a good excuse. Mine was to make a travel show. What's yours? Incredibly inconvenient for absolutely everyone. Yeah, else. no, it's actually just a great excuse. I love enchiladas. The cameras weren't switched on, no. <laughs> so you have to fake the introductions all the way through. Uh, stuff eagles, you just eagles. We saw seagulls. I mean, something else. Yeah. I would suggest not drawing any more attention to yourself. <laughs>